A child was killed, and at least 35 people sustained injuries as a result of a Russian-guided aerial bomb hits in Kharkiv in the early hours of Thursday, according to Ukraine State Emergency Service. The strike damaged the entrance to a residential building. Rescue operations and the search for survivors are ongoing, according to local authorities. The State Emergency Service of Ukraine released footage of rescue operations underway and emergency workers assisting residents. Ola Sinihubov, head of Kharkiv Oblast Military Administration said the Russians had struck the Saltivsky district of Kharkiv. The attack damaged a third floor of an apartment building. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has posted a video from the site of the attack. Sadly, there are victims, including children. There may still be people underneath the rubble. All necessary services are working at the scene. Every day, partners can see what is going on. In these circumstances, each delay in their decisions means there are dozens, if not hundreds, of Russian bombs like this against Ukraine. Their decisions impact the lives of our citizens. This is why we must work together to stop Russia with all the force we can muster, Zelensky wrote. Finland's president said North Korea's dispatch of troops to Russia represents an escalation of the Russia-Ukraine war that goes against China's own stated position on the conflict, following talks Tuesday with the Chinese president. Alexander Stubb made his comments after meeting for more than three hours with China's president Xi Jinping in Beijing in a visit to discuss the war as well as trade and other issues. Chinese officials did not comment on specifics, but Chinese state media said the two sides had an in-depth exchange. North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to Russia is escalation, expansion and provocation, Stubbs said. The US government on Monday said that North Korea has sent 10,000 troops to Russia where they are believed to be headed for the Kursk border region where Ukrainian troops have seized Russian territory. Stubbs said that deployment defies China's position that there should be no escalation, no expansion and no provocation on the battlefield. China and Brazil issued a joint peace plan earlier this year that calls for no expansion of the battlefield. The Finnish leader also said that China should continue its efforts in pushing for peace in Ukraine, and that the starting point should be Ukraine's peace plan. He also expressed concerns that Russian President Vladimir Putin could deploy nuclear weapons in the course of war. It's extremely important that a major power such as China keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible, Stubbs said. Xi, for his part, 
expressed China's willingness to work with all parties concerned, including Finland, to continue to play an active role in promoting a peaceful resolution of the crisis, according to state CCTV. Stubb and she previously had met 14 years ago, the Chinese leader noted in his welcome remarks before their meeting. They had met when Stubb was Finland's foreign minister and she was China's vice president. North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to China is, sorry, to Russia, is escalation, expansion and provocation. Uh, so we had a good discussion uh, about this. My own analysis is, this is my analysis, not the words of the president, is that for China, the Chinese-North Korean relationship is not very comfortable at the moment. Uh, because as a matter of fact, it can lead to escalation. China's relationship with Russia, I respect the autonomy of both sides, has a direct effect on China's relationship with Europe. So if we feel that Russia's aggressivity in Ukraine is a threat to us, then it has ramifications for anyone who directly or indirectly uh, supports uh, Russia. The final and fifth point uh, I made is that it is very difficult to trust President Putin, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons. Uh, and that's why it's extremely important that a major power uh, such as China uh, keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible. Chinese-Russian relations has an impact on Chinese-European relations. And for China, the biggest internal market in the world is the European Union. So my worry is that we're going into a cycle of tariffs, of trade escalation, etc., etc. We need to avoid that. We need to have a level playing field. Um, and, and this is the ongoing negotiation.